Good morning, Anarchy Land. How are you? I hope you are dry and warm because we are cold and wet. We got snow everywhere with more coming over tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday is going to be extremely cold. Again, I hope you're dry and warm. Alright, guys. On America, how free are we really? We are going to look at Frederick Engels' book, Socialism, Utopian and Scientific, by Frederick Engels. Remember, this is about looking at the ideology and why it came to exist. It's not about labeling. It's not about anything like that. Alright, the opening of this book right here is very long winded. I mean, extremely long winded. Uh, Fred, Mr. Frederick Engels, remember, he was from Germany. His family was. Part, uh, would be the petty bourgeoisie, meaning they were business owners, they employed people, y you get the idea. Um, when he got a chance to go to England and work at their factory there, he jumped at the opportunity. I mean, jumped at it. He made a point that materialism civilized the English word world, meaning it civilized England. How? I don't know. Um, a lot of the manufacturers, well, they were men that ran these companies. You know, when a woman got married, her husband inherited her father's estate. She didn't, she didn't need it because she didn't work. Her husband did all the work. That was the mentality then. Um, most of these men would take advantage of people who did not speak English as a first language. Hey, why not? How will they know? They're just a beast of burden to the bourgeoisie. Um, Engels pointed out that feudalism started within the Catholic Church. Imagine my shock. Popes have a history of doing whatever needed to get and stay in power. Just another day at the office, right? From England, materialism made it to France, then all over Europe. I said materialism is where capitalism came from. At first, it was just in the royal houses. Then, like wine, it poured out everywhere. Um, that's when the trouble really came. When materialism surfaced, it had a very nasty consequence to it. Royal heads rolled. King Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette were the first to go. Uh, from there, it would, their greed was their demise. Yesterday, the police caught somebody that was trying to sneak into the White House to kill Trump, right? And his greed is going to be his undoing. The greed of people like him will be their undoing. You know, one diamond is never enough. It's got to be, the next one's got to be bigger, it's got to be better. This has been the mantra of the bourgeoisie. They, now, how these people got control, the capitalists got control of banking systems and countrywide uh, financial systems is very simple. They married into the royal houses. Yep, yeah, they married in. Alright, take the um, Amschel, Meyer Amschel Rothschild, for example, okay? He started out in Germany making loans to individuals that he found when he made a loan to a king. He made higher interest, 
a bigger annual percentage rate at the end of that loan, he was wealthy. And he kept doing this over and over and over. He got where he could fund both sides of a war. Then they started marrying into the royal family. And at that point, he made clear that he did not care who made policies or what policies, as long as he controlled the money. He controlled the policies and the policy makers. The Queen of England, as a result of this, the Queen of England is queen and title only. She really cannot pass anything without their okay. Now, no one's ever going to admit this. If she revolts against the Rothschild family, fortune, gone. Title, gone. Her, gone. This is the level of control they've gotten. Okay, Mr. Ingalls goes into depth about the theory behind socialism. True equality, no exceptions. That means no more war, no more exploitation. Which is why governments hate socialism. They hate it. Because they can't cause war under it. They cannot inflict the absolute hell directly that they want to. That's why they get people like Jamie Dimon to come out and say socialism erodes societies. Well, it again, he doesn't like it until he can benefit from it. Same thing with Trump. He doesn't like it until he can benefit from it. Now, social, socialism evolved in the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. What is going to happen in the 21st century? How long before people realize the events that led up to the rise of socialism in the past is repeating itself right now? I mean, right this very moment. The arrogance is a curse of capitalism. It truly is. We've gotten so arrogant in this country that we think we are entitled to everything the world has, everything the earth has, and we're not. We are not entitled to Venezuela's oil because it belongs to Venezuela. Plain and simple. Now, the arrogance. Look at a situation with Juan Grado declared himself the interim president of a country that is basically a democratic socialist, being that they can vote for parliament and their leaders, people that come in the office, and they can vote them out too. That's how democracy works. You come in by the people's will and you go out by the people's will. You don't declare yourself president. But this government right here has gotten to the point of arrogance where they actually acknowledge Juan Guado as president of Venezuela and they expect us to go along with it blindly. No. No. Now there are an unbelievable amount of the arrogance. I'm just going to move on because I honestly could go on for hours about the level of arrogance in this country and the consequences that are going to come of it. Now, another thing that really bothered Ingalls and Marx was the emergence of new Christ new age Christianity. And we're seeing this say these evangelical nuts pray for war with various countries that they're told to do it. There are four stages of development of society savagery, barbarism, 
the Paris shot in civilization at the end of one part of part one of this book Ingalls made a reference to Robert Owen he set up a place in New Harmony Indiana now I don't know what it's called now um, it was a good idea okay everybody lived there they worked for him it was rent free now yes he had rules that they had to live by what he forgot and a lot of social leaders do forget is that it is human nature to want to own your own home it is it's human nature we want to own our home. Um, his experiment lasted for about four years. Now, the, he did do a really good thing with coming up with pre-K programs that took kids out of a workplace and into a place of education. They learned their alphabets. They learned their numbers. Started building the foundation of their education. Now that was a good idea. The problem was everything people bought had harvested went to the communal kitchen. There was just like it was a disaster, okay? You got the same exact salad for each person. There was like ten thousand unnecessary steps put in here. It was completely unnecessary because the salads were wilted by the time people got them and he himself lived in the big manor lord manor house lord man lord's manor is what they were called which made him the lord and ruler and then the peasant the new boss the same as the old boss the exact system they left behind he reincorporated that's why it failed uh, Ingalls made it clear in this book that every system does have its flaws. He even said socialism has its flaws. You know, it's, it takes time to figure out how to make a system work. You gotta tweak it here and there. Oh, my goodness. Um, he, they understood. And the point of this book was to emphasize that people themselves, when you exploit people for a long period of time, something happens. Okay, I got my cold coffee here. It is, they get pissed off. And even a caged bird. Will eventually open its own cage. The desire to fly free will always be that lure. People will always, always rebel against a, ter a tyrannic government. Whether it's ran by a dictator, communist dictator, if it's ran by a socialist dictator, if it's ran by a capitalist republic, democratic dictator. They will always rebel. It's like starting a clock. Ingalls made a point of how spoiled and entitled people get when they have everything handed to them. You see, he didn't believe that people should have things just handed to them. You should have to work. You just shouldn't have to work 60 to 90 hours a week. For very little money and pay astronomically high taxes and benefit zero from them taxes. I remember a story I came across during while well, I was watching this Great Depression series. Henry Ford gave his son. Um, I can't remember what his son's name is. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But his son's 21st birthday, 
gave him a brick of gold that was valued at a million dollars at that time. A time when people were going hungry, they were going homeless, they were jobless. And he gives his son a brick of gold worth valued at a million dollars. This would be as insulting for people. If Trump gave his youngest son Barron a brick of gold for a 21st birthday, and there are people in this country that don't know where they're going to live from month to month. They don't know where the next can't, uh, paycheck or com is coming from. These kids that grow up like that have the Peter Pan syndrome of never growing up. And why should they? They get everything handed to them. Now he didn't make a um, point as Marx did in his book that when push comes to shove, your bourgeoisie will financially cannibalize each other. They will. And, and as Trump said, to the victor goes the spoils. That's his mentality. That should tell you something about him. Now, last Wednesday he said, in his speech that socialism erodes governments. They could not be more wrong if he tried to make it wrong. Look at Finland. They are a democratic socialist country. They have found that balance where people can work, earn, live comfortably, but they don't have this extreme different you know this extreme gap like we have here it's only getting worse so to the Jamie Diamonds, Mike Pompeo's, the Trumps socialism does not erode societies greedy people erode societies uh, we're seeing an example of that if people would open their eyes with Puerto Rico. There's a prime example of how capitalism is eroding a society. It has completely destroyed Puerto Rico. Now, uh, Engels and Marx both made this point once these groups have cannibalized each other financially. Let me start with Jamie Diamond and Mike Pompeo and Trump, Bloomberg and all these billionaires. Once they've financially cannibalized each other and anarchy is over, a new and better society will emerge. Because they'll be gone. They will be flat broke. They will have turned on each other. And killed each other off. Personally, I say let the mayhem begin. Give me a minute to pop popcorn and get Dr. Pepper. Boom. Let it begin. Alright guys. Remember, this is not about labeling people. It's not about anything. It's about looking at the ideology. Where it came from. Why it existed. What countries have been successful. Like Finland. Denmark. Yes, they pay a high tax. But I guarantee if you sit down and you count every tax we pay. Throughout a day, 365 a year, you're going to find out we pay more taxes. Because we pay a bunch of tiny little breadcrumb taxes. Instead of one big tax, we pay more. And we're a republic. It's supposed to be a republic. We're not. We're a tyranny. Um... Usually... 
tyrannies do fall and things get better. Once the dictators, capitalists, monarchs are gone, we have nothing. Like Marx and Engels said, we have nothing to lose but our chains of bondage to these sadists. So, I look forward to your opinion. Remember, this is just looking at the ideology, where it came from, why it evolved. That is it. I will see you guys later.